cold open because it's a part two of our AMA Travel Vegas Diaries podcast edition. I don't know what we call these things. Anyways, bonus episode of the Real Life Podcast. because Just the two of us, though. Yeah. So remember how we promised everyone we were going to do a Saturday pregame bonus podcast? We, we decided lied. yesterday, and by we, I'm going to throw him under the bus because he's not here right now. Jay uh, was like, no, no, let's do it tomorrow so we can talk about the game, which did make sense. Yep. But in our heads, or not even in our heads out loud, we had planned, okay, if the Oilers win, we are going to Fremont. Which we did. And we did. And me and you had a sidebar yesterday when Jay was like, no, no, it'll be better if we can talk about the game. We said, eh, are we going to be able to wake up early enough to get this thing done? You and I did, though. Yeah, I will cut him. I'm packed. I will cut. Nine o'clock, showered, got ready, went for a walk, bought a, a little package of watermelon. Delicious iced coffees. Some delicious iced coffees for me and you because you were awake and could answer my question of anyone want iced coffee. Yes. Uh, I then went for a walk. I did like a whole thing on the strip. I went all the way to that ABC store by Park MGM and then looped back by Park or yeah, loop back, whatever. Um, people listening won't care about that. I, was, I went for like a half an hour walk is my point. I came back, um, got all the gear set up, packed all of my clothes, which yes. were neatly stored in a drawer. Um, yeah, and Tyler is a drawer guy. If you missed that, Tyler yeah. is a drawer guy. And Jay is still getting ready. He, I, when I got back here, he was in the shower. That was like 20 minutes ago, and he is still in there. Yeah. So me and you said we got to leave to the airport in 40 minutes. Uh, had to do a podcast. And we got to do a podcast because we didn't do it yesterday. So we started by ourselves. Yes. So he's going to come out here, mm -hmm. probably in a towel, mm -hmm. jump on the mic at some point, maybe. Some point. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we did have some AMA travel adventures yesterday. Yeah, it was weird because it was an early game yesterday. The four o'clock start here in Vegas was, it was like a weird in-between time. Yeah. So we had a bunch of work to knock out in the morning and we got that done. But then you look at your watch, you go, oh shit, it's only three hours till the game starts. Yeah. We got to go. Yeah, so what did we do? We finished up our work, and then we did, oh, we did our pregame lunch at Cantina. Of course, had to. Which was also the first meal of the day I had eaten. Yes. Still. Um, so we loaded up on tacos. Was that and the only meal we ate yesterday? Maybe. A Johnny Rockets last night, I guess? No, we had to have eaten in between somewhere. I didn't eat anywhere. I didn't eat. Oh, no, no. Uh, we had a hot, you had a hot dog at the game. All right, yeah, yeah. Barely a meal. And I had the brisket mac and cheese. Yeah, that hot dog was cool. It was a bacon cheese hot dog. That was delicious. Bacon cheese, like, on top or inside? On top. Mm, that does sound good. It was actually, it was really yeah. awesome. So anyways, yeah, we went to the Taco Bell Cantina, went for a nice walk on the strip, stair club, got our steps up. How many steps you finished yesterday with? I don't know. Probably not nearly enough, though. I don't feel like we did enough walking yesterday. Uh, 12,000. That's, That's not enough. Good. I like to try and hit 20 when I'm in Vegas. Uh, yeah, fair. It is easy to rack up the steps if you're uh, not doing something like spending three hours at a hockey rink. Um, but anyways, we went, had our cantina lunch, walked back, and I was a little nervous. Like, there were a lot of Oilers fans there for game one. Yeah. And I thought the schedule change was going to screw over more people than it did. Mm. And I was like, ah, oh, there probably won't be as many Oilers fans just because a lot of people couldn't change their travel plans. It was too pricey, whatever. And I thought it was going to be less. Oh, boy, was I wrong. As Way more. soon as we got in front of that little street where the arena is, and there's like a lineup of bars and stuff, it was all orange and blue. So Gold Knights fans must have been sick of it, but like we really took over. You'd have to wonder then how many people, because they got screwed on their travel plans, like how many of us could have been in there last night? Well, that too. Like we know of a lot of people who wanted to be at that game and could yeah. not be at that game. Yeah, and it made sense. Like the, the flights were crazy. Some people like... What was the guy we met? He had to go to Nashville, then Winnipeg, then home. Like, yeah. There's just these wild travel adventures of people going all over the place to get back to Edmonton just because the fucking game two got moved. Yeah, but anyways, there were so many Oilers fans out in front of that arena, and the vibes were cool. Like Everyone was, was taking great. pictures. Everyone was high-fiving before the game. I kind of liked that it started early because I had some legitimate nerves about that game. I did not want to come all the way down here and have them go down 2 nothing. Yeah, I was worried about that too. Like, for, I wasn't worried about it for like the state of the series because I think down 2 nothing, the Oilers still would have had it in them to come back. Luckily, we don't have to worry about that. Um, but I was just like, oh man, like for the vibes of the night, I want us to have a great night and like an Oilers win sets the tone. Also, early game, right? So it's not like one of those, if they would have not shown up last night and gotten spanked, we would have still had like a full night of what? Just sitting around being like, well, we're pissed. 
Yeah, because yesterday, day off, we set the table that it was going to be Oilers win, Fremont celebration. Yeah. We had our bets down. We squad bet. Oh, and did we ever squad Woo. bet? Oh, there's Jay. Hey, guy, Jay's out of the shower, everybody. Just start without me. Yeah, because we have to go soon. What? Don't we fly out at 12.50? Yeah, it's 10.15. I know, so don't we have to leave here by like 11-ish? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Traveling with Jay is different. Yeah, I'm of like I'm always an early airport guy. Yeah, me too. I'm a nervous traveler. Jay is the if nervous He's travelers one end of the spectrum, he is off the other end of the spectrum. I keep it casual. Why? Why go wait in an airport? We can just hang in this room and have, do a podcast. Because this room stinks. Yeah, it we, does stink. And I don't mean like quality wise, although maybe. But this room smells bad because we've been in it for five days. We've lived in here. Yeah. And we've refused housekeeping every day. Yeah. Well, because at one point they showed up during the pod. Yeah. The other time it was like 7.30 in the morning and they're knocking on our doors. Like, no, please go away. This is rude. We were uh, setting the table last night. Well, it was a big night. It's a big table. Huge night. It was uh, outside the rink. The vibes were excellent. Oh, man. Inside the ring, too, like after the Let's Go Oilers chance. Yes. We also... Uh, I thank Connor McDavid's parents for having Connor. Tyler and I were walking to the Park MGM just to use the washrooms, put a, last, a couple of last cheeky bets down. We saw the McDavid's walking out. Felt like a good omen from the start. It was. He performs for his parents. We needed it. We needed them here, and I didn't know that we needed them here. We need them... AMA Travel's got to work with them, make sure they're at every game. 100%. Had to. Also, what I would say is we were well lubricated by the time the game started yesterday. Oh, it was man. party mode to the max I for think, game two. Well, I, I, think we d- and I think that was the right move, but like going into it, I was like, I don't know if I can have a drink. So I want the story here because we split up because BM and I had to run up to the hotel. Yeah. Wanted to ditch our sunglasses. BM wanted to put on his real glasses. Yeah, I'd like to be able to see. I was debating putting on jeans. We had a shot. But we left you for like maybe 40 minutes. Yeah. You were sober-ish when we left you. Yep. And you were hammered yeah. when we yeah, found you again. How? We, uh, well, in America, they do something that is called free pouring. So we went and got into the spirits because I was like, oh, man, I think I got to cut down like beers bloating me. Yep. I was kind of just, I got I to gotta switch it up. So I went with Sean to the uh, Spirits uh, little station and got a vodka soda, a double, which probably was a quadruple. Because what they do is they fill the shot. They, so, they, so Chalmers they, was your bartender. Yeah, it was a Chalmers pour. And then I got <laughs> what's called a Manhattan. Because, you know, to Kentucky Derby, thought I'd have something with bourbon, put some money on some ponies. Uh, and then I had two of those. So it was probably... I don't know, eight eight ounces of booze in like twenty minutes. Yeah, that probably wasn't smart. Oh well, yeah, I yeah, that'll fire the engines up. Oh yeah, I was I was rocking. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about? The ponies. Oh, have we not? Oh yeah, we haven't done a pod since. We that. haven't done a pod since. Okay, that. well yeah, let's take it back a night yeah. because we, as you know, and those of you who are listening who have been on nation vacations to Vegas before. We love the plastic horses. Love them. Love them. It's fun to yell at them. There's no rhyme or reason who wins what. It's just they're fun. You can sit there. You have a drink. It's great. It's a great way to pass time. Yeah. So when we went the first time, I hit a 222 to 1 bet. Yeah, which was amazing. I thought that was outrageous. Crazy. Yes. I only had a buck on it. $222. That was nice. Very nice. I then... More or less immediately lost it, but regardless, because I was playing blackjack. Vegas giveth, Vegas yeah, taketh away. That's right. Next night, three of us and our pal Sean, and we decide, all right, we're going to win to kid it because there's only one spot open. Yep. And shout out to the guy who was sitting there originally who was like, oh, I'm saving it for a friend. Then he was like, oh, no, my friend's not coming. You guys can have it. He gets an assist on he this play. Get, he, uh, he gets the assist. So you can bet on the horses or there's a little like side bet with a jackpot. Where it will randomly spin the six horses, give you an order, and if you get the first two right, it's like five to one. First three is 50, first four is 200, first five is 500 or something. But if you get all six horses finish in the exact order that this thing randomly spits at you, you win the jackpot. Yeah. And 
we learned this after the jackpot started at a thousand, went up by one cent every race, and was at thirteen hundred and eighty something. I think right thirteen eighty six. A lot of races. That is a lot of races. I can't do the math on that, but it is a significant amount of races. And we bet on our horses. We threw a dollar on the side bet, and we watched the horses go around. And it was like, ah, damn, like whatever. I think we were heavy on the five horse, and he came third. And we're like, ah, damn it. And then you just kind of hear like, ding. And you look, and it's win 1,300. Like, my jaw hit the floor. <laughs> yeah, it was. And to do it as a wind kit, we were just jumping up and down. Jumping up and down, screaming. Everyone's yeah. like, what's going on? Because the payout for that race was really shitty. Yeah. And so, like, why are these guys celebrating? <laughs> yeah, you're right. If it would have been, if we would have been sitting in a row and, like, just one of us had won, would have been hype. More for the one person, but the fact that we all threw twenty bucks in the machine and we yeah. were all tapping it, making our bets, that made it even better. Yeah, that was good, and you know it, that 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 allowed us to go for a real nice dinner. Yeah, we did. We went to uh, Emerald's New Orleans Fish House or something like Bam. that. It was great. Oh, so good. I had this like seafood something Creole. It was so hard to say it. I kept. We, yeah, both you and I were fumble fucking it. What was it? It was real Creole seafood. Something. Something, something. It was, it was delicious. Really Bunch of sides. Great bottle of wine. Great bottle of wine. Hashtag red one line lifestyle. We didn't really go for any nice dinners ever. So to go out on that one because of the plastic ponies, it doesn't get better than that. Well, that's 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 you know, when 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 you're when you're a horse owner, a plastic horse owner, and it hits, <laughs> you uh you get to live a bougie lifestyle. <laughs> Uh, then yesterday, back to the game, we had a bunch of bets down. Yes. Yes. I went mega make a money line and then got excited at the uh, sports book and sprinkled around. Oh, there's over three and a half. Oh, there's puck line. Oh, you had a real nice night then. Oh, yeah. Smoked it. Oh, I love it. Smoked it. Did not smoke. This was a colder trip on the craps, except for it started electric. Started off real hot. Did not go well after I, that. I, I actually think, even though first night we won so much, I think I'm down on crap. No, I know I'm down on craps, but that's okay. That was fun. We also played squad blackjack last night on Fremont. I'd never played blackjack before at a table. Yeah, that was fun. That was the first time. And everyone was winning. That we was, all won. That's good when you got a good blackjack table going and everyone can win and you just shoot the shit. And just like, they, like... <laughs> You can't finish your drink fast enough before you can get another one there. No, they were really dialed in on the drinks last night. The black Heineken's like a also a great cover band again on Fremont Street. Love having a little boogie. Fremont was uh, yeah they yeah she had some pipes too. There was two lead singers, a male and a female, and the female one could just yeah she wails rip it, which also kind of leads us into a conversation we were having the night before with Tyler. Yes. Where we were asking if Tyler, because we were watching Pitch Perfect. Yeah. And we said to Tyler, wouldn't you love if your missus could sing like that? And Tyler just looked at us dead ass and said, no. I'm not a big musical guy. <laughs> was not raised in a house that was overly musical. Or not musical at all. I'm not musical at all. I know. So, like, it's just not something that, like... I don't know. It's not something I look for in a mate. <laughs> well, we're not saying well, it yeah. has to be a, re a requirement, but like it's a pretty nice value add. Yeah, absolutely nice value add. I'll be. I'm. I'm very happy to share with you guys that I got sent a photo this morning of Crawford watching Pitch Perfect. I got sent a video of Crawford watching Pitch Perfect. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Everybody's loving Pitch Perfect. Well, I always like to keep uh, your girlfriend updated on what's going on in our Yeah, trips. there's some back channel chats that I don't know about <laughs> that uh, my girlfriend talks to these guys to make sure I don't do something stupid. Yeah. Well, we tried to go against her orders yesterday and get you the Viking helmet, but they were Yeah, closed. but to be fair, it would have never came home, I don't think. Uh, yeah. Probably not. It Unless would have well at, It would have fit in well at Fremont. Oh, it would have been fantastic. God, I love Fremont. Um, anyways, where were we? Because now we're bouncing around a little bit. Yeah. Um, we were still at the game. Or, yeah, we're talking about the ponies. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we won big on the ponies, had a great dinner. I had the Creole fried chicken, everybody. Thank you. Um, and Quite nice, actually, after the ponies bonus that we, part of our uh, Windicate squad is also an accountant. 
Yeah, because they take a chunk. They took 30% of that winning. Oh, you're Canadian. We'll take 30%. So he's going to be able to like figure that out and get us that money back? Yeah. yeah he's going to file a U.S. tax return for you <laughs> and you'll submit the claim and get it back. Huh. Do I need to like give him some of my info? I think you already, already did. Knows. Okay. You're in the system. All right. Good to roll. I did learn I had an MGM rewards card. Yeah, so you probably got like a knight or something off that. Yeah, but then I immediately lost the card. Yeah, but they still, yeah, but it's they, still they, in they the... They not have any credit, though, for that, uh, for that big win. I really... I feel like we messed up. We did fuck up, because we gambled, we gambled a, a lot. Like a fair amount, and I didn't use a, yeah, my you, card you ever. credit for the wins and the losses, so yeah, yeah. we were flowing the money. Well, I was just... I was up and down like a toilet seat. I'm going home with more money than I got here with. I almost am, too. Oh, I don't know. I have to check. I'm I'm not like I think I'm down a little bit, but like nothing I'm not upset about. I think and I know this will sound like a gambler whatever, but like <laughs> I think gambling I'm even on this trip or I'm up a hair, but I'm down cash cuz I've spent cash on things. Cuz I came here with a chunk and I have a little bit less, but like man, last night. Uh, we'll get to last night and what happened after the game. But let's talk about the hockey game. Quick goal, start things off. Jeez. The lady next to me, so I was sitting next to someone who comes to a lot of Vegas Golden Knights games with her kids. And she was actually like a very uh, like passionate, like we didn't see a lot of, uh, I don't want to say it. I guess maybe I just didn't talk to a lot of Golden Knights fans, but she was like breaking down everything going on in the game. She was breaking down what's going on with the Oilers. And it was funny because they get the first power play and she leans over to me and she goes, if Dreisaitl scores from that spot, I'm going to lose it. And sure enough, Drysaddle scored um, like immediately after. I thought that was funny. But again, Golden Knights fans, great. Top. The best. Top. And she wasn't like mad or anything at any point in the game. She was just like cool to chat with. And like even after the game, Golden Knights fans, except for one guy or one person on Fremont. But after the game, Golden Knights fans weren't like mad at us. They were just like, man, what a great series we have here. Like, how lucky are we to watch this? And it was like, what a mindset. Gosh, Dolly. Stark contrast from being in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh boy, you guys got the best of us tonight. <laughs> oh boy, those rib punches were rib entertaining, weren't they? I love that quote from Vander Kane. It's so funny. Oh, that's taking the internet by storm. It is. Um, but Leon Dreisaitl <laughs> scores. Leon Dreisaitl then scored again. The Oilers scored what? Four in the first? Yeah, Hit four in the over first. Three and a half, first period. Let's go. I Which was, was one of the bets we weren't heavy on. I was convinced I was doing another hat toss. Yeah, you were itching for it too. I had two opportunities, Connor and Leon. I don't know if you guys have seen the stat, but like Leon Dreisaitl has 13 goals already in the playoffs. Mm. Isn't a record 19? Yeah. 13 goals is how many Nathan McKinnon had last year in the whole playoffs, and he led the NHL. So Leon Dreisaitl, again, game two of round one, or of round two, game two of round two. His eighth game. His eighth game. This is already, he's already tied for the 40th best playoffs ever by goal scored. Ever. And the record BMU right and is, I, is I didn't. I didn't think this was ever possible. Somehow, he did it. He broke Fred Cyclone Taylor's record of consecutive <laughs> road goals. <laughs> what a, what I a, did, what a I record. Did not, I, that was one I thought that couldn't be broke. Gretzky's, Sure. We can get we can get past <laughs> yeah. Cyclone Taylor's. No chance. Holy shit! I thought that thing was never going to be touched. Cyclone Taylor's consecutive road goals playoff record. Yes. Oh, the estate is mad. <laughs> but he's just he's the best player in the world right now. He, Man, it's, the it's, way he elevates in the playoffs is something else. It's just, it's like this just determination and he's got this X factor. Man, like it's wild. It is absolutely insane. He's just been such a handful all playoffs, and nobody can really do anything about it. Like, what what would playoff Leon extrapolate into in a, a 82 regular game schedule? Like, 300 points? Yep. Well, I mean, so for his <laughs> for Leon Dreisaitl's career in the Stanley Cup playoffs, he, in 45 games, has 76 points. That's outrageous. Like, he's one and a half goals sense. per game. He's over one and a half goals per game. So that'd be 120, 30 goals. In a season. He's six in his last two games. There was a point where he had six goals in his last four periods after the first period last night. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Needless to say, he's pretty good. 
Oh, that was yeah. just a much like shocking. We actually showed up and like played hockey yeah. and destroyed them. That was like, the Oilers last night. Like that's what makes game one so frustrating, but whatever. Like the domination like that, you forget about it, but still and like So the two goals up. from dry and we had from our seats in our vantage point the most beautiful view of Connor McDavid ripping through the neutral zone, working his way past the D-man, who I think it was Petrangelo, right? It was Theodore. Or the, it was, yeah, it was Theodore. Theodore, yeah. Theodore, so pretty good D-man. That's a guy yep. who like would probably be an Olympian if they went to the Olympics. Peels past him, and then like one-handed and full speed, tucks it in past oh, Brassois. That was one of the disrespect. craziest goals I've seen in person. Just made LB look silly. Yeah. Just shoved it. Nice little placement there at full speed. Oh, I loved it. And we talked about this on the pregame show, Jay, but like, LB is a good goalie. He's never going to be like the reason the Golden Knights lose a game, or he usually won't be. But we said, like, if you make life difficult on him, he's beatable. He's not a guy who's going to steal them a victory either, right? And no. I think that's really what they did last night was like, they went to the net, they drove hard, they made the most of their chances. They really did go to the net. Hyman now was a factor. He was getting in the mix, so he woke yeah. up. That was good. It was good to see Nuge get a couple points, contribute to the to the cause. David with a three point game, two Boosh, goals. big clapper on the power play. Oh, yeah, it was just funny in game one. We kind of said there was it was McDavid, it was Drysaddle, and then it was sixteen passengers dressed in that hockey game. Last night it felt like there were eighteen drivers. Yeah, like it was, everyone it was, was coming. A complete, it was a complete game. Like we had a lot of good chance. What was the shots in the first period? Nineteen four, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. They just worked them. But like, it, it, but like we, but the thing is, is like. In the in the in the mental battle that is playoff hockey, like we really mess with Vegas heads because we own them in every facet of that game, in 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 just the effort, just the play, obviously the skill, but also in the physicality. Like they tried to get physical in the I was just like, all right. <laughs> I watched uh, I watched the clips of all the physical. Like we they didn't they didn't gain a edge on us like we owned them in all of those tassels it was awesome you could tell there was a little bit early on when those scrums were starting vegas had it in their heads that like all right we're losing the game let's get them like let's try to beat them up let's try to and edmonton just said no you said uh today when i came back from came back to the hotel room you were like man i watched the highlights last night edmonton doesn't get pushed around anymore they don't at all no man it was it was wicked i also love when physicality starts a little bit and then they can just throw a monster line of humans out on the ice if they want to fuck around. Would he put Vinny on the wing for a shift? Yeah. It was hilarious. I'd say no, we're winning. <laughs> like, I, there was that lo- They had on the ice, CC Nurse, Vinny, Costin, and then the center, I think, was McLeod, but still. Like, just giant just, humans. Just big boys. Yeah, the meat. Yeah, the silencer. Woody pulls it out. It was great. I like it though. I like to fully like or that Woody likes to engage in in that, right? Yeah. Well, it's like if you want to dance, let's dance. Yeah. I uh Ken Holland must just be doing backflips because like he loves size, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the size is showing up. But it's also like functional size. It's not just because big. Yeah, like Clint Costner had a couple good looks in that game. He could have very easily scored. Oh, for sure, for sure. He always he always gets a couple good looks, and you know. He, I also liked how late in the game, uh, anybody who's trying to hit Connor, <laughs> Clean was having none of it. Immediately stepping in, Clean was so good. Yeah, he jumps into everything. That's the thing I love. Reckless abandon. How you doing, Stuffy? Are Tyler's fighting allergies or something? Yeah, I had my mic muted, so they probably wouldn't have heard any of that. But thanks for bringing up that I was blowing my nose. Well, I'm, I'm, I do. I probably sound congested. So. I'm on a non Omni mic. Probably picked it up. No, no, I wouldn't have picked that up. I'll go back and listen. Sorry, I accidentally stopped recording for a second. Boy, what a mess. Uh, anyways, the Vander Kane thing. We want to talk about that? Sure. But you don't see body blows all that often. No. Yeah. And like, Vander Kane got him in a spot where Colasar was helpless. Like, yeah. he couldn't fight back at all. And I almost feel like Colasar is lucky Kane went with the body blow route. Because if he wanted to feed him up top, he also probably could have done that with the left hand. But Kane just <laughs> feeding him the body blows. And then Kolasar leaving the ice was like smashing his stick over the side things down the tunnel. Like Kane got into his head a little bit there last night. He got embarrassed, that's why. He did. And then Kane <laughs> after with the fuck around find out. 
<laughs> it feels like <laughs> all he was missing was the graph, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, see, the more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. Last year, he flashed up the seven when he buried the empty netter in game six. And he was really good in that first round. I'm not saying otherwise. But then against Calgary, like, he, the juices were really flowing, right? Because yeah. L.A. kind of poked the bear at the end of that series. Yeah. They poked the bear last night with Evander Kane. He has been wildly inconsistent through the first eight games of these playoffs. I think he. I think we're going to see. He's awoken. Yeah, we're going to see last year's playoffs version of Evander Kane. Now. Like, what is Vegas? What's their game plan for game three? Like, do they want to try to engage us again in that stuff? They can't. Because I, like, I, I, I think it actually hurts them if they do yeah. mentally. Well, and you look at some of the penalties they took last night, like moments where they were about to have a power play and then they do something dumb. Or like Jack Eichel had two trips to the box in that hockey game. Jackie. And if you want to come out, if you're Vegas, and be like, all right, let's like try to hurt them a little bit, right? Like physically, what are you going to do? Gift the Oilers power plays? Didn't they score three power play goals again last night or something? Or three special teams goals? Like, Yeah, well, what were we? What was our percentage of the power play last night? It had to be. Had to be. 50? Yeah. It just, were we two for four, two for three? Because well, we, we scored on our first two attempts, right? Yes. Um, so we were three for six. Still rocking that 50% power well, play. No, it, it drops their percentage, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was an off night. Yeah, it was an off night. They only went three for six. That's insane. Well, that's the thing. A team that doesn't take many penalties, we're goading them into taking penalties. So that's Yeah, they average 2.4 times shorthanded yeah. per game in the so first round. So that's probably what they're going to try to clean up is not take penalties against yeah. us because holy shit are we making them pay. Yeah, because last night, like unlike game one, Power play was snapping it around real clean last night. Yeah, they were humming. And that Bouchard shot is just put that on repeat as like when people are like, oh, what what, what makes the power play so much more dangerous right now? It's because you have to respect that. It's so funny now in hindsight, right? When Tyson Berry got traded, they're like, oh, well, what's going to happen to the power play? And all of a sudden, dad just steps in. He's like, I got it. Yeah, He's got a better shot than Berry. Oh, yeah. And that's what I mean, right? Like uh, the power play going to the next level, like, Barry, I mean, he might. He had a good shot. But, like, Bouchard walking in and firing that home, that was a result of Vegas saying, Kate, okay, we're covering Connor and Leon on the half walls. Yeah. And you covered Connor and Leon on the half walls, and it was like, it right someone's up. open. And everyone that's on the ice is so dangerous when you just leave them open. Like, it's crazy. Bouchard's got an absolute laser beam, too. Yeah. It is just a heavy, heavy shot. That was like 92 miles an hour, that shot. Yeah. It's crazy. I love it. So... The only thing was that the final, I mean, there was a, the antics at the end with all the fights were great, but like final 40 minutes were anticlimactic in that arena. Golden Knights fans were leaving. Yeah, yeah you, we got a mass exit. You, you, you were tired. I was a sleepy guy because yeah. I was just like, you have so much adrenaline and like nerves and everything going into the game. And then they go up for rip and you're just kind of like, oh, okay, well. Your guard comes down a there, little there bit. Was a, there was a guy. I, I was feeling it, too. There was a come down. I was trying to manufacture energy. Yeah. All of a sudden, it was Fremont. That's what got me going. All right. We will uh, talk about our Fremont experience after we pause for an ad. We also got to give some love uh, back home to the watch party at Greta. That looked like a great time. Yeah. It looked bumping in there like oh, again last man. night. Looked oh. rocking in there. At one point, we FaceTimed them. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> nope. Yeah, we did. Um, FaceTime whomst. Just the whole crew. Yeah. He said hi. During uh, the game? No, no, no. After the game when we were out on Fremont. Oh. Um, but anyways, Oilers game ends. We're all rowdy, fired up. We got some Let's Go Oilers chants going in, uh, in the concourse. We went out to the plaza area in front of the arena. High fives were just going oh. everywhere. I also forgot how much T-Mobile hates when you linger on their property. Oh, yeah. They, they cannot stand it. They push you out. Yeah, they uh, really, it's like herding cattle. They, like, shove everyone out one way. Um, but that was great, like, interacting with all those Oilers fans after. Um, I had someone come up to me, and they go, hey, you're the nation, guys? I was like, yeah. They go, you're bagged milk, right? And I was like, yep. They reached out, and they go, congrats, man, and just shook my hand. I don't know about what, congrats. but that person thinks I'm bagged milk. Congrats on being bagged milk. I, I guess. Doing. Um, but it was so <laughs> cool just to see all the Oilers fans after the game. Yeah, it was funny. I was, we were hanging in the plaza with Sean, and a guy goes, hey, you know his name, And then he goes to Sean, and he goes, are you bagged milk? I'm like, Sean. We are all bagged milk. I'm like, Sean, you're probably going to get asked that a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> bagged milk's a state of mind. It is a state of mind. I last night, we were all bagged milk. Bit. Yep. I love it. We went. Uh, also, the, the juju was good. Yeah, we did. We played the juju cards right. 
It was perfect. So we went, cashed our winning bet slips. What a feeling. Your team wins. You're rocking the jersey. You go give the man a little white slip, and he gives you back a bunch of cash. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's I love I love that. I love when we go in there, and there's just some Oilers fans kind of lingering in, going in, cashing tickets. I love it. So much fun. Yeah. Um, so we went, cashed our tickets, high-fived a bunch more Oilers fans, and then it was Uber time to get to Fremont. First off, we ran into Gene, Harner, Ryan, and Louie waiting for our Uber. We sure did. A bunch of beauties. We, it's, it's not a trip if we don't run into Harner Ryan. Yeah, it is becoming a staple on these things. Yeah. Huh? Um, so we hopped in our Uber, went to Fremont, and we boogied. Oh, I love I love a good cover band, and the cover bands on Fremont Street are absolutely gas. And the duo last night was like a hip-hop cover band, too. Like They were breaking out the jams. Yeah, they, Huge they had range. Jams. They had range. It was yeah. funny. As soon as we got out of the Uber, Bag Milk like, shot out of it. <laughs> And went right to the front of the stage. Like, remember? Oh, like, yeah. He crossed the street when we didn't. And Jay then, there was like no traffic, but the sign said, don't walk. And Jay turned to a security guard and was like, can we just go? And the guy goes, what's the sign say? And Jay goes, Fremont Street. And the guy goes, don't get fucking smart with me. Like, Whoa. I was like, Jay, hey, easy. <laughs> well, there was a lot of signs. He was really pissed off that you asked that you were being a smart ass. He was well, like, I could have just gone and did it and been a real dick. I asked. I was being polite. Yeah, yeah you did. Um, but yeah, you were gone. You crossed the street before us, and I, I turned to you. I was like, we might not see him again. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. He's just sitting right at the front of the stage yeah. there. And there were Oilers fans out there with us. Yeah. And we danced the night away. You had a large Slurpee drink. Yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah, no, it, was, it seemed very sweet. And you kept telling me to take sips of it. And I was like, no, I don't want that. Yeah, it was not great. Uh, uh, we it was ran, a poor ran, life choice. Ran into our pal Nick Alberga from uh, Leafs Nation. Yep. He was in town, and he was the one who FaceTimed uh, the crew back in Edmonton. Ah. Yeah. Uh, so we boogied. Sometimes you got to boogie. Yeah. And then once that died down a little bit, we went inside and gambled a little bit. First time I ever played blackjack at a table. And we, like people who play blackjack a lot, know how uh, difficult it can be for the whole table to be having success. The four of us, and it was just the four of us at the table, which I love. That was peak. The four of us sat at that table, and we were there for probably, what, an hour? Oh, oh yeah. Easily. Yeah. And we all finished up money. Yeah, everyone won. I won a lot because I was playing that easy bust. Yeah. And I kept hammering that, um, which was great. And, yeah, we all walked away from that blackjack table and walked out of Fremont up money. Up money. It was the perfect end to a perfect day slash well, night. Getting getting food at White Castle would have made it perfect. Yeah, line was crazy in there. Act in there. Love me some Fremont White Castle. Johnny Rockets was fine. Johnny Rockets was actually good. That burger was massive. Yeah, the burger was unreal. Um, they charge you an arm and a leg for it, though. Well, yeah, yeah. nothing's cheap here. Nothing is cheap in Vegas. Um, but yeah, that was a good burger at the end of the night. And then you woke up and I had leftover tendies on the TV stand. And you and said, the, that's good enough and, for me. And Tyler was concerned. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to eat food that's been left out that long. That was fine. That's cooked chicken, bro. I know, but it's been <laughs> sitting in a muggy hotel room for like eight hours. It's, uh, they it's, say it's, food's it's only good on the counter for like two. Who's Whatever, they? man. Hey. Who's they? Uh, do, you not, like, do you also have your food uh, safety... <laughs> Certificate? Both my pro serve and my food safety certificate? Yes. Uh, but anyways, that was a great, like... What a trip. Perfect end to the trip. The thing that we did right is we didn't go... Because we were here so long. So long. Yeah. We didn't go hard every single night. Wednesday and Thursday, we were in bed before midnight both nights. Yeah. Friday, we got after it a little Friday bit more. Kinda, I, uh, Vegas got me by its grass. I was well, we're buzzing off of the... Off of the ponies and then going out for a great dinner. I was just feeling great. I could have stayed up till six in the morning so easily and just lost everything. Yeah, because you were down and, and you didn't care. It, and I was chasing it. Yeah, and I didn't care. I, and, I didn't feel it. <laughs> I like you said Vegas had you in their grasp because they were coming around quick with the free drinks. Oh, at Fremont they were last oh, night. Oh, last Lord. night. Fremont, you couldn't oh, keep up. You couldn't keep up, man. It was insane. I, like, I had like three Heinekens on the go at once. It was wild. Yeah. And when you're on, like, the main strip, if you have a drink, they'll be like, hey, like, you got to be done that by the time yeah. I come back. I can't leave you, too. Fremont, they were like, what, do you want the whole yeah. case of beer? Sure. Fuck, I'll go get it for you. 
I don't know why I kept ordering one because you always have the fear of like at other casinos, like I may not see her again. So like, yeah, I have to get it. Well, she kept coming. She was lovely. Yeah, that was great. I had easily three, four Heinekens at that table. Oh man. Yeah, I think I put back like six or seven Captain Cokes just from playing those tables. Also, Nick Alberga does not gamble very much. Me and him go into the casino before you guys. And I was like, hey, let's play spin a roulette. He was like, all right, sure. And he gave the lady whatever, 50 bucks. Or sorry, no, he only gave her 40 bucks. And he just wanted to play the inside, scatter some numbers. But she gave him $5 chips. So he only had eight dart throws here on the board. Uh. And he threw two of them on 24. And he was like, I don't even know how much I'm betting. And I was like, well, you're betting 10 bucks on one number. And it hits. No one way. Spin. That's one spin. One spin. Nails it. Wins $360 just like that. Walk away. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to, because he got the big stack of chips and was like, holy shit, I won that much? And I was like, yeah, bro. So he cashed him in, dipped right away. We go back in after with you guys. And he goes, I'm going to go play another spin of roulette. Second spin, does it again. He <laughs> Hits the number again. Yeah, he won $700 in three spins of roulette and was like, I'm out. See, and he went to the club. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I love Same that. Number? I think so. I love a different that. roulette table. Nation Squad came in and just cleaned house last night. I was like almost mad. I was like, bro, <laughs> I've been grinding at these tables I've got for a system, you for know, days, days, <laughs> and I have gotten screwed over at every turn. But then karma came back because that blackjack got a new juju. Yep. Did we talk about the juju we created? Yeah, we should. So we were we were very fortunate. We were gifted uh, four. Uh, additional seats to the game these ones were in the lower bowl uh meaning our four tickets up uh in the upper bowl were now available so what you could do is you could sell them and make some money but i always my my rule is if someone's gifting me tickets that are better than the ones i was already going to use to go to the game then i should be give those tickets yeah and pay it forward yep and so tyler put it out on twitter yep Extra takes to the game. And people lit up the DMs, but we gave them away. And what's the story? We had two two groups of two. Yeah, so the one um, was from Seattle, actually, is where she's from. And they were just flying in because... And she flew in, like, she DM'd me at, like, 1 o'clock and was like, hey, I just landed. And I was like, oh, my God, like, you straight up flew in. And I think she said she flew out today. Kaylee was her name. Um, she had Kaylee, Oilers fan from the Seattle area, flew in. And then uh, the other one, his name on Twitter, at least, uh, I know it was not his real name, Zeus. Was, was Zeus. So his name to me is Zeus forever. Um, and he was great, too. He had just kind of flown in as well. And yeah. Yeah, we're tough. We had, but the thing is, like Vegas, they are very strict on like resale tickets and all of that stuff, right? Yeah. So like you can't really transfer the tickets. So we had to meet up and go in as a crew of eight together, which I did kind of yeah, like. I liked it. Yeah. And then Zeus bought us a round of drinks, yeah. which is pretty much like paying face value for the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, uh, what are those beers, 20 bucks? 20 bucks US. They're yeah. massive, though. Like, they're big. The big 24 ounces, yeah. But uh, that's expensive. I like that you're working on a White Claw right now. Well, so I bought it last night because I have this thing. Um, I always like to have a beer in bed at the end of the night. Like, when I go out partying, I'm always like, I can have one more while I'm in bed watching my shows. So, last night, I was like, I could... My stories. I was like, I could I could crush one more. So, I went and bought two. Barely touched the one I cracked. Don't know why I bought the second one, but now I'm like, well, shit, it's here. So, why not? Yeah. Still in Vegas. Chipping away at it. Yeah, it's okay to drink at 1045 in the morning if you're oh, in Vegas. Oh, man. I'm just, I can't wait to be home. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it was a, it was, it was a slog this week. Like, we a lived, good like, one. We lived here. We were residents of Vegas. But the problem is now, <laughs> game three tomorrow. Yeah. I got tickets. I'm going. And I'm like, oh, God. I, uh, I, I've i given my tickets up. It's I, probably a smart play. I got to do some family time. Me and Crawford are going to watch Pitch Perfect 2 and then watch the hockey game. I like that. She's got to see the whole trilogy, man. She needs to know. I feel bad because Amber's watched me live it up and party in both Vegas and L.A. the last couple of weeks. So I feel like I owe her a night out. 6.30 puck drop tomorrow as well. That's nice, though. Yeah. So 
That is nice. Oh, weird. We're recording something and... Oh, uh, we're okay. Thank you. And housekeeping is trying to come in. You want to get her on the pod? I don't know. I'm very confused as to what's happening right now. Are we can kick Isn't out? it check out? What time's check out? Probably 11. Probably 11. Okay. Well, we have 13 minutes then. Yeah, we good. Yeah. I feel Vegas. like just going to come in. I will have her on. I'm totally sure. lost my train of thought. Anyways, oh, Amber's been watching me party it up, so I feel like I owe her a night out. It's only the second time she's ever been to a playoff game, so I feel like I'm going to also get after it tomorrow. You're young. I know. You can do it. But do you hear how congested I am? Oh. It's okay. a grind. Playoffs are a grind. Everyone says the players, everyone's playing hurt. I feel like I'm playing hurt. <laughs> Self-induced pain. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Self-induced. I'm just so happy that we did not go like crazy Thursday and Friday. That was the best way to do it. Otherwise, this week, would, this five days would have been. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, Vegas is a two-night town for me. Yeah, that's fair. Unless you're like doing stuff or like I could, going I out and about. See- I can see it. I actually enjoyed our day. We went walking around. That was nice. Yeah, and we cruised too. We went up and down. Yeah, we the covered. Strip. That was a twenty thousand step day. Yeah, a lot of stairs. Especially like the weather was honestly kind of perfect. I'm glad we missed whatever it was last week. Where it was thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven. Yeah, like no, that, thank you. Then like you can't walk around everywhere. You're just cooking, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Especially if you're working on a drink. But like mid twenties, the breeze would kick in once in a while to cool you off. That was nice. It was nice. Good. All right, we should probably wrap this bad boy up, hey? Yep. Got to give some love to uh, Jamie at South Island uh, Pico. You can use the promo code NATION20 there to get 20% off your order. I know neither of you boys are cooking when we land at 7 o'clock. You're popping oh, a pie you. in the oven. Oh, yeah. I've got some uh, I've got some variety right now in the, fr- in the freezer. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, our friends at Betway, who are a big reason why I am up money on the trip. Yeah, uh, Connor and Leon both to score a plus two twenty yesterday. All good. right, all right, very plus good. Plus two twenty. Oh man, I should have backed you on that. I just yep. went aggressive money line on on the app, and then I did all the other stuff in the sports books. Fair. But the account is flush at the moment, so that's yeah. great. All right, that is a wrap on uh, this little AMA travel extra edition of the podcast. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed. We were kind of low energy for this one, but I think people can understand why. Well, to be fair, I'm laying in bed. Yep, uh, we'll chat again later in the week.